All right, over the weekend, there was a story that was going around, mostly from heterosexual men who were discussing it. Tim Pool, Abin Preach, a couple of other no-name channels, I don't know, who were basically saying, oh my gosh, look, cis women are posing as trans women and trans people are upset because, quote, they are costuming my gender. And then they shared all these tweets from trans people who were so upset at this cis scum. I'm saying all of this in quotation marks. And we're going to go over it today because I want to hop into this bubble. I think it's really important for us to examine it and have conversations around it. And of course, I'm going to be talking to you, my audience, who is educated and well-read and thoughtful. And, you know, we watch documentaries when we're bored. So we are going to have a much better conversation than maybe some people's communities have been having around this subject matter. If you have comments, if you're genuinely curious, if you want to know things about trans people, you want to have conversations about the LGBTs, you can ask good faith questions, but no transphobia in my chat, okay? A few men mostly covered this story because the Daily Mail reported it back in early September and everyone and their mom clung to it. And I want to just point out that the Daily Mail is only so reliable and pretty much never reliable as a true source because they they tell you, they tell you what's going on, but they don't really tell you what's going on. So as you go through this article, it's explaining that these two women are cis posing as trans women in order to make money on OF and trans people are upset about it. Keep in mind, it's barely, barely anybody is talking about this story. First of all, trans communities are not talking about the story because it's not a story. This is not a real story in a sense. Let's let, let me explain. But Notice that people who are more transphobic ran with the story because they thought it would bring in more clicks. They thought it was so outrageous. Like, oh my gosh, look, trans people are upset as cis women for pretending to costume a gender when trans people, all they do is costume gender, right? That's a transphobic argument displayed here in this wonderful tweet here by this transphobe. They're, I think, a turf. I'm not sure what's going on with them. These girls are using dildos to pretend to be trans. Oh, and oh boy, are certain people angry about that. Apparently it's offensive when other people pretend to be something that you are and they aren't, especially when they sexualize it. Hypocrisy, thy name is genderism. The argument is, the argument is, trans people are pretending to be X gender. Why can't these women? Because trans people aren't pretending. Unless you're transphobic. Only transphobes think trans people are pretending. That's why it's not the same. Now, should people be offended that these women are doing this? Now, when I say this is not a story, this story does not have any traction from trans communities. Progressive people are not talking about it. Trans leaders are not talking about it. Queer people are not talking about it. The people that are talking about it are severely mentally ill Twitter people, which I don't even count as people, and heterosexuals and transphobes. Those are the people talking about this story. Okay? So I just want... I just want to make it clear that like these are not the same communities. Okay. Chat says, how is trans different than posing? Legit question. That doesn't make any sense, Brit. Okay. Listen to me when I say this. Trans people are having a genuine expression, experience, lived moment in time, temporary or for the rest of their life in relation to their gender. It is a real experience. They are not self-identifying as if to fake it. They are having a real experience. They are not pretending to be something. They are having a real experience. Do you know how to play imagination? Imagination is when you pretend to be something you're not. Trans people, being trans is an experience. It is different than cis. Okay, block Selena because they're transphobic. I don't want any transphobes in my audience. If you think trans people are confused, if you think they're pretending, if you think they're faking their experience, you can go watch another YouTuber. There are so many other content creators you can watch. I am so sick of trying to explain something to people that nobody wants to do the work to understand. If you do not want to understand the trans experience, if you do not want to actually educate yourself, if you don't actually want to consider their lived experience, then you don't need to be in the audience. Okay? You can go watch anyone the else. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye. The reason I think this is funny is because once again, it's the transphobes and the haters that are making this a story. Now I got curious because I here I am watching the boys respond to a story that in my mind, I was like, this feels fake. This feels like a fake story. Now I'm a queer person. I've dated trans people. I've been around trans people. I'm pretty sure I know that this feels like a fake story. So this is silly Lily. 
just two boys being silly. Now they've got like dildos or something in their pants, like strap-ons, right? Now see how this original story from um, the Daily Mail says, OnlyFans models are targeted by online LGBTQ mob after posing in underwear with fake bulges. Let me tell you, the mob was two people, four people, six people. It was nobody. Nobody and their mom gave a fuck about this. Now, they give a fuck about this, and this is the point of the girls doing it. The girls are doing this on purpose to go viral, to make money off transphobes. That's why they needed the transphobes to be upset about this. That's why the Daily Mail is trash reporting. Because if you look at the like interaction with their posts, it's nothing. This is the most interaction this post has, and it's 16K views. Oh, that's kind of a 16K hearts. Oh, that's kind of a lot, right? 12 million views. Oh, that's interesting. Just two boys being silly. But yet this silly Lily. Okay, so she's an she's a, an account. This is an account, silly Lily. Okay, same thing. These two girls. They have like no posts. It's like it's like fake accounts. 2,000 followers. Okay. All linking to the same OnlyFans accounts. I looked them up. 2005 girly with special weapon. Come find out. Lily. And it's like same OnlyFans account. But this has 52 followers to 52K followers. And I was like, oh, interesting. Then this account. This is her friend Alex. 6K followers. Same picture. Same OnlyFans. Well, it's a different. Two girls have their own OnlyFans. Okay. What are they doing? See how they're posing cute, but with the bulge? Okay. Wow. What is this? It's cis women who have an OnlyFans who are trying to rage bait you, which you're falling for because you're transphobic. And then the story goes viral. Then you all sign up for their OnlyFans because you're all horny bitches. And then they make money while they laugh to the because it's not a real story. Now, as sex workers, you can choose to be the type of sex worker, which is fine, who rage baits your way into money. But the fact that transphobes are using this as a gotcha against trans people, because trans people are like some trans people, two or five, like very mentally ill looking Twitter people. Because, OK, so then I then I was like, who who are these? Who are these? Who's this LGBT mob? Right. Look at this LGBT mob. Who's this? Who's the mob? OK, I looked up every Twitter I could find that was sending disgusting comments. I couldn't find the original tweets, only screenshots. I found the accounts, but I searched through every account like a month back trying to find where it came from. Couldn't find it. Maybe they deleted it. Every Twitter account I went through looked mentally ill and crazy and nothing like a well-adjusted person. They might've been trans, but are they well-adjusted? I don't care what crazy unhinged people think. I want to know what the well-adjusted people think. So when I think about cis people, I don't ask Marilyn Manson his thoughts on foreign policy. Okay, I want reasonable, grounded people's opinions to things like this. And if well, you know, grounded, reasonable trans people were having issues with this, I would have heard it because I haven't heard from them. I've only heard people and particular bubbles who are chronically online getting somewhat mad about it. And I couldn't even find the original tweets, only the screenshots. So if anyone has the original tweets, great. But they were, you know, I can't tell if they're fabricated. This is Twitter. I never know. But even if it was five whole angry trans people on Twitter getting mad about this, it's the fact that the transphobes use this as an example to do a gotcha to trans people and their lived experience, right? That's the issue is that you think it's a gotcha to say, oh, why? They, if you can play pretend, why can't they? Trans people aren't playing pretend. That's the point. Now, is it offensive? That's a good question. Is it a question? I mean, is it is it offensive? Mm, okay, I'm going to equate this decision as a sex worker to something else that got covered many, many years ago. Do you guys remember Karina Kova? Do you remember this girl? I covered her many, many years ago. This is Karina Kova. Karina was an adult actress who made high production videos, specifically this one, dressing as a Native American doing corn, right? And people were really upset. And I understand why they are upset, especially, f you know, the representing a bubble she's not a part of. I think she's Lebanese in real life, but I don't remember. So this was like very controversial. And this is sort of similar to an example of sex workers using a niche to promote their videos to find a specific audience, right? Just like the original girls, like this Lily girl who's like allegedly trans or whatever with her friend, just a couple of boys. Like they're literally rage baiting you. Okay, Corinna or Karina, she came out, she made a, a statement about it. This was many, many years ago. 
This also reminds me of some backlash I received once when I posted this photo. I didn't receive much backlash, if I'm going to be honest. I think most of my audience knows I'm not actually actively religious. Oh my God, Brittany, come on. But this is a picture that I did and some people were upset because they were like, isn't this offensive to Christianity? Yes. This is very offensive to Christianity and, and Catholicism. It's deeply offensive. I did it anyways because I have the right to fucking do what I want. And if you're going to be offended about it, don't look at it. And that's sort of how I feel about everything else in life. It is offensive. I don't, I don't know how to tell you that. Like it is offensive. You know what I mean? I don't, there's no way a devout Catholic would see, a devout Catholic would see this and not be offended. Like I did, I took off my top at one point. I have a whole photo shoot on OnlyFans where it's definitely smexual. You know what I mean? So what's the difference from that? Karina looking like a Native American and doing corn and these cis women pretending to be trans. What's the difference? The difference is why you know you're doing it, if you know it's offensive, and are you targeting the right communities? Now, in my opinion, and I think these are very different things, I think they're kind of all on a spectrum. Look, I consider my OF stuff art. I consider myself an erotic artist. I consider the stuff I do there expression. I don't expect a devout Catholic to sign up for my OnlyFans. I don't expect them to follow me on Twitter. I'm hoping they don't see it, right? And as a former Catholic myself, you know, once a Catholic, always a Catholic, I'm not somebody who's trying to offend people who are religious to their faces. But I don't believe in religion. I think it's a construct. I don't adhere to the construct, just like I don't adhere to gender constructs, right? But I am aware at least that it's offensive. Now, is this, you know, cis woman, these Lily people, Lily and Alex, are they aware that it's offensive? Do they care? I don't think so. I don't think they need to have to care about trans communities. Obviously, it'd be ideal if we cared. But at the same time, there is a genre of, you know, adult work that works for this aesthetic. There is a genre of adult content creators that would thrive with this kind of aesthetic. I can see the appeal in so many ways. I think it's slightly, I don't even know if it's, I don't even know if it's really about being trans or so much it's about that fantasy of a girl with a dick, which is very different and specific. It overlaps and they do relate. But I do think it's a lot more nuanced. I think these girls are just trying to make money off the rage bait of the transphobes. That's my that's my theory. My theory is they sat in their bedroom. They're like, how do we piss off the internet and go viral? Look, the Daily Mail, Tim Pool, Ebba and Preach, people on Twitter, conservatives covered it, centrists covered it, transphobes covered it. As a gotcha to trans people, when like trans people weren't even upset, it was a few people on Twitter. Nobody gives a fuck about what happens on Twitter, especially with no name, very mentally ill looking Twitter posts. Like if you're on Twitter that much, like borderline mentally ill, probably all of you. So it feels like a perfect place to try to promote your OnlyFans, right? Maiden says it's reclaiming the sexuality that was pushed down and shamed in our reli- in the religion. Maybe, um, possibly, I when. I know for myself when I make the art, I just think it's pretty. At this point in my life, I don't have any shame. I don't even know that I had shame then. Like, I guess I must have had a little bit of it for sure. But I don't have any shame in regards to anything. I don't, I think I'm at the stage of my life where I just want to make things that are pretty. I just think it's nice. Like, I don't know. Like, but it's not to say that it wouldn't be offensive just because I think it's pretty. You know, I think it's just about saying, I know that it must be offensive to you. Please don't watch it. Because at some point, we have to acknowledge, like, everything about your culture, everything about your religion, everything even about your gender is made up. The dilemma is that it applies to everybody, not just some of us. Gender is a construct, and so is religion. That doesn't mean you can't offend somebody with a construct. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have to be respectful of people because it's a construct. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean. And I think what's missing in the conversation is that we're not acknowledging that all of us are faking everything but we validate its realness. Religious people think they have more of a grasp on what's real than trans people. And they have no reason to think that. But yet we live in a world where we let them think that because there's more of them for now, out. How many religious people do we know who preach homophobia and transphobia only to find out behind closed doors they are gay or trans? So again, I think that this story was a little frustrating For me, only because it's so obviously not even involving queer people and grounded queer people. It's just a cis mess. Cis people 
using LGBT communities to make some money, and that's fine. I just think it's shitty. But those are my values, you know? Everyone has a way of operating in the world. I'm not the kind of adult content creator that personally wants to, like, trick my clients into thinking something, thinking we're dating or thinking that I'm trans or thinking that I'm anything. I just want to express art. But I think that's the difference is I'm not a client-based content creator. I get requests all the times in my DMs on OF. Do you do customs? Do you do dick ratings? Do you do sexting? Um, I want to give you an allowance. And like, no, I don't do any of those things. You know, I don't, I say no to every request that comes in. Not because I, I just think I'm a very, I'm a creator first and foremost. And I think there's a difference here. I think these girls are not artists, which is valid. They are business people. Like they're sex workers in a business, which is valid. Being a business is fine. But I think that's the difference is like they're not expressing themselves. They're just mon like they're monetarily gaining on a kink or fetish that people have. And I think that's really what's happening, you know? Um, do you guys have any thoughts on this? Any comments that you saw that came up? Also, just remember how they said there was a mob coming at them? Is there anything more disgusting than pretending to be transgender and then being transphobic towards trans girls? Yeah, no, but that's what was happening because of these girls, for sure. These two trans ladies started an OF subscription, which turned out to be quite successful with the trans communities up in arms calling them fake trans and many threatening them with violence. What's the issue? I think uh, trans... Uh, I think they are trans and should be accepted and such. First of all, I went on their OnlyFans. They're definitely, they have very small following right now. It just started up. Some of their Twitter accounts just started. And then one of the most astonishing things I've seen all day is like, how do they make actual money from it? It's easy to see what they're doing. That's the thing is like, I think it's obviously a rage bait. So who's this mob? Like who's this LGBT mob who's coming for them? Like Daily Mail is trash reporting, guys. I don't know why so many transphobes or so many men use Daily Mail as like their source. It's just so strange. Let's see, Luna says probably all of us have some uh, attribute or do something that is offensive to somebody else. No exceptions for sure. Abby says, I was kind of wondering if this story was made up bigger than it should be to drum up more political tension with the election coming up. I don't even know if it's about the election, but it's just like rage bait, rage bait, rage bait, rage bait. And like we have such bad media literacy that we just run with these conversations and then perpetuate more negative stereotypes towards people. Like the comment sections on these men's videos were very transphobic, right? Because again, you cannot make the argument that cis women can pretend to be trans because trans people are pretending to be not like to be women or men or something. Like that's a transphobic perspective. Thinking trans people are faking their experience is transphobia. But of course, and this is I think a, a, a reality that a lot of us have to face is we should live in a world where these labels can be fluid, where you can be cis and then trans and back and forth, where it's not a stagnant identity. I think we run into a problem where we think like being trans or cis is stagnant. And I think it's only stagnant if it is, but often it's very fluid in a lot of us, just like sexual orientation. I don't think a lot of these things are stagnant. I think a lot of this is fluid and we're missing an opportunity for humanity to acknowledge that. But I think it's because people, they really like things in boxes and they want to be like, I understand you. Tell me what you are, which is so valid. But I think that's also the dilemma that plays a role in all of this. It's like there are so many conversations that that personally I had with my partner just spanning like out of this conversation, like so many conversations came up in our relationship about how people have an idea in their head of what something is. And then that's the idea that they think is sort of a representation of the group. Like, oh, I could never date a trans woman because this is how trans women are. And it's only the image they have in their head or, oh, like I wouldn't date somebody with a disability. But like, what does that mean, right? Or I wouldn't date somebody who's fat. It's like we have an idea in our head of what these things mean or I wouldn't date a black person or, oh, I could never date a man or, oh, I would never want to date. It's like you you mean something when you say that that could be phobic or could just be a preference or could be, but probably more or less it's rooted in a misunderstanding of somebody. That's why I think I always like to ask people, what do you mean by that? Oh, I couldn't date somebody who's disabled. It's like, what do you mean by that? Oh, I couldn't date somebody like this. Well, what do you mean by that? And then we can figure out where it's rooted from, but it's probably from a fear and misunderstanding, which makes it the phobia. Right? The transphobia, the racism, the ism, the tism, the, you know what I'm saying. Are they doing the cancel thing to drive traffic traffic to their OF? Probably. Yeah, probably. Let's be real. This is a, this is a rage bait. And 
I think it's just disappointing when people fall for it because they just, I don't know, I think they want to because it fits a narrative. That's my opinion. I think if you run with this story without thinking about that it's rage bait and the women are doing it on purpose and that the people that are replying to it are like nobodies, but also like people are allowed to have a different opinion and also your opinion might be transphobic. I think... Yeah, I think it's just disappointing to see content creators kind of make those decisions. But, you know, we all do it. And it it really allows us to play into our biases, prejudice, and narratives. Ah, see, here's an example of that thing I was talking about. See, here's another example. This is why trans communities are so violent. See, this is proof. I'm going to start, you know, treating men the same way y'all treat minorities. Like, you know what I'm saying? We keep doing it to each other. We need to fight those things. I need to fight my misandry. You need to fight your transphobia. You need to fight your misogyny. We need to fight those things that make us think one person identifies the group or five people represent the group or even a hundred people represent the group. We, that's a bias we need to fight. That is bias and prejudice. That's what I'm saying. We all have it. We all need to fight it. Let's see, do people fall for it or do they use it to further their points because goes viral? Um, do people fall for it or do they both? Probably. I can't tell. You know, I'd have to ask people like I can't read minds, but probably both. Maybe. Let's see. Scooter says, I think it's about harm reduction and the concept of punching down. The nun is shooting and the nun shoot is punching up. This feels like punching down. Mm, could be. Yeah, I could see that perspective, actually. Yeah, but the thing is, is like Catholic people, like if you talk to Catholics, they feel like they're always under attack. Their numbers are dwindling, less people are going to church, less people are like, quote, following the religion. So they always feel like they're under attack, which is like very interesting. Even though they're not, it is one of those things where it's hard to tell somebody who feels like they're being targeted that you're not being targeted. And look, when you walk out your front door, most of us go through our day without getting hurt. But what we are afraid of is the possibility of being hurt. And I think that's a universal experience that everyone feels that fear of like, will I get hurt today? Which also could be an American fear. I, you know, now that I've been living in Europe for over a year, now that I'm in Croatia for over a year, there, I have an anxiety in me that doesn't exist in the same way in other people here. Like I have a paranoia that I'm going to get shot and there are no guns here. Like I am always looking at people suspiciously here. Like, are you going to hurt me? And I am always on edge and I definitely stand out in that way. Like I, I have this fear. My partner's like, you don't, you're in one of the safest countries. Like literally Croatia gets rated one of the safest countries, especially the part we're in. Like it's a very safe town. I feel so afraid sometimes just walking in midday outside. And that's like an American fear. That is not like, that's, that's an American specific fear. Even my mom has it. My mom's like, be very careful going to the mall by yourself. Like, you don't want to risk it. And that's an American fear that's been put inside of us. Like, you want to be careful. You want to be careful. You want to be careful. And like, my brother will be like, hey, make sure nobody has a gun. Like, they wear guns at their churches, you know? Or even like in certain neighborhoods, you have to be careful past a certain time. Like, it is a fear we have. Now, I'm sure this is in other places. But for me as an American in a different place, it does. I have like a lot of anxiety. You know, I'm sure other people feel it too in other places, but yeah, I'm trying to learn to relax here. I'm trying to believe that I'll be okay, especially since there's no reason for me to feel like I'd be targeted. You know, I'm not any of the might. Well, they are pretty homophobic, but I, I don't look gay in that way. Like, I don't think anybody would mistake. They might mistake me for trans like a lot of people do, which would also be bad, I guess, transphobic. But who knows? There was recently a couple of gay guys who were harassed uh, for a hate crime in Croatia, but the Croatian authorities responded to it very quickly. So that's good. (laughs) Let's see. What about straight men doing gay porn, not talking about relationships? I think all forms of porn are okay as long as there's an understanding of what's happening. I don't think it's wrong for straight men. I don't think it's wrong in Hollywood for like gay people to play straight people or straight people to play gay people like that's not the issue I don't think it's wrong for non-trans people to play trans people I don't think it's wrong for trans people to play cis people like none of that is the issue I think the issue is that this is being used to promote transphobia like transphobes are using this as an example to promote transphobia and that's always going to be the issue Nothing you do should promote more hatred in the world. So if what you are doing is literally causing people to want to destroy or neglect 
or ruin people's lives because you did something, you should maybe think about recontextualizing that work of art. So if your movie is creating more racists, maybe recontextualize that art. If your OnlyFans or something or your YouTube video is promoting more transphobia, maybe we should dial it down. Now, of course, some people might actually be those things, like might be transphobic. And so they don't, they want their work to do that, which I think Tim Pool and other people are doing that. I think they are transphobic. And so they are using this as an opportunity to be more transphobic. Yeah. Okay. With that said, I think this sums up this story. It just feels very disingenuous. I don't like seeing transphobia, but we live in a transphobic world. So it is what it is. Stop reading the Daily Mail and thinking it's real news. You know, come on, guys. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.